Hey folks, good morning and welcome to this episode of Motorcyclist MC Commute. Today we're going to be riding Suzuki's 2021 GSX R1000R. So let's swing a leg over this bad boy and tell you what it's like to ride. All right, folks, here it is, Suzuki's 2021 GSX R1000R. This is Suzuki's top of the range leader class superbike. Now, Suzuki has been making these GSX-R 1000s since the 2003 model year. When that vehicle debuted, it blew the competition out of the water, much like BMW did with its 2010 S1000RR. Now, this GSX-R 1000R differs from the standard GSX-R 1000 by the use of this Showa BFF fork that replaces the Showa big piston fork on the standard Gixxer. It also has this premium Showa balance free shock absorber with clever adjusters right there up top here. It also comes with launch control. This bike has launch control. It also has these awesome LED position lights. The standard GSX-R does not have these. These things are awesome, especially when you're riding at night. And this bike has a bi-directional quick shifter. Another nice touch. It's also worth noting that this Gixxer 1000R now has stainless steel braided brake lines. Look, stainless steel braided brake lines. That is a tremendous improvement this motorcycle retails for seventeen thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars so almost two thousand dollars more expensive than the standard gsxr 1000 but you get a lot of extra features for that almost two thousand dollar up charge i really like the styling of this motorcycle suzuki always kills it with the graphics and the color combinations. This is a very aesthetically pleasing motorcycle. It looks well proportioned. I like the LED tail. I like that this motorcycle just has that racy GSXR boy racer look, which I am a big fan of. But enough talking about this motorcycle. Let's swing a leg over it and tell you what it's like to ride. All right, folks, here we are in a good old-fashioned mechanical key. Nice job, Suzuki. This key hasn't been redesigned like the Tuning Fork Brands vehicle we tested in the last episode, but that's okay. I love mechanical keys. Thank you, Suzuki. Let's fire this bad boy up. Suzuki has its easy start assist. So all you have to do is press this button and it automatically starts it. I know it isn't a lot of work to hold down the starter button, but Suzuki thought it was. So they allowed the engine starter to turn over with just a tap of a button. This motorcycle is also endowed with Suzuki's low RPM assist. So you let out the clutch and the engine automatically elevates in idle slightly so you can come away from a stop without having to rev up the engine. Now right away sitting on this GSX-R 1000R I love these motorcycles. They are very comfortable on the street. Suzuki always does a nice job balancing the ergonomics between just casual street riding and race track performance and that just makes for a more versatile motorcycle specifically the rider foot assembly isn't too low it isn't too high I do miss the foot peg position adjustment now the previous version of Suzuki GSX-R motorcycles. The GSX-R 600 and 750, I guess they still have it. But the that would be a nice addition on this motorcycle, the ability to adjust 
the position of the foot pegs. But even in the OE configuration, these things aren't bad at all. Clip-on style handlebars are also not too high, not too low. They have a nice, comfortable bend. I like how slim this motorcycle is between the rider's legs. It's nice and slim. You would think an inline four motorcycle would be a lot wider than this bike, but it isn't. It's very slim. It has good proportions. This motorcycle is a good bike, whether you're a shorter person or a taller person. It's just very balanced. Suzuki always does a fine job with making its sport bikes adaptable for us street bike riders. Now, this GSXR 1000R is powered by Suzuki's 999cc inline four engine. This is a dual overhead cam, water cooled, 16 valve engine. Now, for the 2017 model year, this engine was totally overhauled. So, Suzuki graced it with a larger bore. They've been steadily increasing the cylinder bore and shortening the stroke with every year of Suzuki's Gia SXR 1000. Now the bore is still a little bit, it's relatively small compared to the Honda, the BMW, all the other companies that are using 80 millimeter cylinder bore. But what it lacks in cylinder bore it makes up for in stroke now these gsxr bikes have always had good bottom end and mid range and that is even stronger with suzuki adopting a variable valve train solution that's right this motorcycle has a variable valve train suzuki invented an ingenious roller bearing type setup where there's 12 steel balls that spin and they allow the the cam timing to be modified so if you want a little bit more low and mid-range performance it closes the cams if you want more top end performance it keeps them open longer very nice technology it is absolutely seamless in its application and it's just nice that Suzuki is trying to evolve its powertrain and give us the give us riders the best of both worlds obviously when you're on the street you want good bottom end and mid-range torque and when you're on the track you want that wailing top end rush of power and this 999cc Jigster 1000 engine does just that. Now, the engine is manipulated via a ride by wire throttle. Suzuki has historically done a great job with its cable actuated throttle system. And this ride by wire is is a very nice evolution of that system. It doesn't feel as jerky as other manufacturers ride by wire set up systems. This thing is very natural feeling. Of course, it isn't quite as natural feeling as an old school pair of throttle cables, but to be able to benefit from traction control and all of the other electronic rider aids that that ride by wire facilitate that is a plus i wish this motorcycle had cruise control obviously now that it has ride by wire this bike could absolutely easily have cruise control and considering how adept this motorcycle is at street bike riding it would be nice if this motorcycle adopted that feature I love how light that clutch is. The clutch has nice light lever pull. Even though it doesn't benefit from hydraulic actuation, the pull isn't 
too stiff and it has a nice engagement point and away we go guys right now we are riding in sdms power mode a now suzuki was an early innovator in the realm of sport bike electronics first with fuel injection i believe on the 98 gsxr 750 and then with its suzuki drive mode select which i think it adopted on the 2007 gsxr 1000 if i remember correctly now what sdms was was it was adjustable power modes a b and c a was the highest power setting b was medium c was low and this bike continues that trait now the sdms controls both the power modes and the throttle response so the power modes and throttle response are adapted to each of those alphabetical characters right now we're riding in a mode which is max power max throttle response if you were someone who didn't feel comfortable with the full 162 horsepower fury of this motorcycle you could use it in b mode and it would deliver a smoother spread of power yes turns thank you god now of course over the years the suzuki gsxr sport bikes have just become one of my favorite mounts just because they're so they handle just so awesomely even though they're never the lightest bike out there they always feel very maneuverable they carry their weight well with a 4.2 full 4.2 gallon gallons of fuel this motorcycle weighs 445 pounds so very light very nimble we rode this motorcycle at the racing circuit we rode this motorcycle at the racing circuit in its natural element and i really like just how these suzukis feel you feel like you're more a part of the bike rather than other motorcycles instead of sitting atop it, you feel like you're in this cocoon of speed now to be fair the seat height on this GS GSX-R1000 is a tad higher than it used to be on its predecessors. So Suzuki has partially gone away from that sitting in the bike feel. It still is like that, but it's not that same way as it was on the older bike. But I'm not saying that's a bad thing because this Jixxer 1000 is crazy nimble. Usually when you have a high, higher seat height, you have a bike that has a little bit more length in the back, which gives it a sharper steering geometry, generally. And that sharper steering geometry helps that bike turn and be maneuverable. And this motorcycle is very maneuverable. The suspension on this GSXR 1000R. Now, I'm a big fan of just the, the old school show of Big Piston Fork. That fork's always been one of my favorites. Of course, Suzuki fits it on their base GSXR just to maintain that favorable price point. But this Showa Balance Free Fork as used on the Kawasaki Ninja ZX-10R is literally my favorite production fork ever fitted on a motorcycle. So obviously because this GSX-R 1000R has that front suspension, I'm going to like it a lot. Now it feels quite a bit different than the BPF fork. Now Showa's balance free technology basically what it does is it allows the piston to not create additional damping force so the damping force is isolated 
outside of the pistons action and what that does is it gives more consistent response it also allows the in theory better traction the balance free cushion light shock also has that same feature where it doesn't allow the piston to create extra damping force this gives the suspension more accurate response over bumps and theoretically increases traction i also like the clever adjustment so preload is adjusted independently atop the fork leg and then rebound and compression damping are adjusted independently so e on each fork leg on the bottom of the fork leg very easy to do the shock also has nice compression and rebound adjusters there next to the body so you can adjust it with a flathead screwdriver very easily this suspension is neat because it has very good response you do just a click or even a half a turn of that suspension you will feel a difference right now we are cruising at 66 miles per hour in top gear pulling right around 5500 rpm 400 rpm i like how this motorcycle cruises i wish of course we talked about it had cruise control not having cruise control is a big deal for all motorcycles who ride by wire throttle should have it but at this speed the engine it doesn't there definitely is some buzz to it but i wouldn't say it's too buzzy but there is some buzz i'd almost say that there's a little bit more buzz in this engine than there was with the previous gsxr 1000 those engines are always silky smooth and not to say this isn't silky smooth but you definitely feel a little buzz through the clip-on control and rider foot pegs the mirrors they do a decent job of showing what's behind you but again there is some vibration and there is some clouding of the mirrors just from the vibration of the engine yes a green light thank you god Let's give her the beans god this thing just rips that was so fun guys it's hard to contain myself from the samurai katana road slicing power of the gsxr 1000 these bikes just haul but oh god another green light thank you god now keeping tabs on the engine vitals of speeds that's why we need cruise control because we're speeding just too much is this monochrome lcd display now while this display doesn't have color it still gets the job done i like it it almost looks like an old retro video game the tachometer is easy to read it's got a big gear position indicator you can scroll through the various settings of the motorcycle the trip computer it has a brightness adjuster right here so you can adjust the brightness of the screen you can right there's the brightness adjustment of the screen we will turn it all the way to maximum very nice and it's generally easy to manipulate we have been averaging very horrible gas mileage on this motorcycle just because we were riding at the circuit for such an extensive period but during the course of street riding as long as you don't ride this thing too crazy you can easily get 36 miles per gallon out of this thing easily so one complaint i have with these suzuki gsxrs they used to always have huge fuel tanks almost five gallons 4.7 if i remember now these fuel tanks have been slimmed down just for packaging and they only have 4.2 
capacity, gallon capacity fuel tank. But even though this display doesn't have color, I like it. There is an adjustable shift light here so you can adjust when that shift light comes in. This motorcycle also has launch control. Unfortunately, this time we didn't get to test the launch control. We used it on Suzuki's 2022 GSX 1300R Hayabusa recently. So if you want to see how that works, please check out that video on our YouTube channel. Now, while this bike has launch control, it also has traction control, 10 level adjustable traction control. Now, it's neat that this bike has traction control, but realistically, Suzuki has really lagged behind the competition in modern rider aids like traction control. There's also no wheelie control, no engine brake control, but realistically the, the, the traction control is the big, the big, I'm not gonna say it's a, a, a minus because this bike does have it, but Suzuki's traction control package isn't at the same level of its competitors. Even though it is IMU powered, it just feels more rudimentary. Now, over the last couple years, just riding this motorcycle at the track, realistically, the sweet spot for traction control for me is this level two. Like I said about pretty much every other modern superbike we've tested recently, I wish there was greater finite adjustment in the level one setting. So I wish you had like level 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, 1 1.5. That would be awesome. BMW has that with their modern S1000RR electronics package with, I think you have to upgrade to the Dynamic Pro option. But with that, you can adjust the traction control in very small increments. And I like that. That's a big deal for me. I wish Suzuki would add that to its GSX-R 1000 and GSX-R 1000R. Yes! Here we go again. Love this thing. Oh, the brakes. Yes, I love the brakes on this motorcycle. Nice braided lines help keep speed in check. God, that was so fun. Triple disc hydraulic brakes. We have Brembo radial mount four piston calipers. Now these Brembo calipers, they work well, but they're not the Stylema calipers that pretty much every other super bike's using. These are more of Brembo's old school, less expensive specification. A nice Brembo radial pump master cylinder pumps hydraulic brake fluid through the circuit. And the brakes work very well on this motorcycle. Again, if your super bike doesn't have Brembo Stalimas, you're almost wasting time. But these brakes are more than capable of slowing down the speed. I like the strong rear brake on this motorcycle. I'm a big rear brake guy and this motorcycle has a nice beefy rear brake. Now this GSX-R 1000R is equipped with motion track ABS that Suzuki's naming convention for its ABS system. Now with the GSX-R 1000R, it is a lean sensitive system so when you're leaning the motorcycle accounts for that and will pull back brake pressure if you are leaning too much for the amount of brake input you have in the motorcycle so basically cornering the ABS so that is a feature exclusive to the R spec Jixer one thousand. I still wish you could manually disable ABS like you can on the European bikes. This bike 
has such a nice slipper clutch and it's so well balanced that it's really fun to back it in on these bikes but you can't back it in with the full time always on ABS. Still, it is neat that this bike has ABS because it just mitigates any potential slides and slips when you're riding this thing. Or if the road surface is dilapidated or slippery. All right, folks, here we go. Yes, a curvy road. This is where Suzuki's GSXR sport bikes are in their element. Own the racetrack and every road in between. I just love the handling of this motorcycle. We talked about it before, but even though it's not the lightest bike out there, it just handles so neutrally and it steers more sharply than I remember with the old GSXR 1000. Yet it still has that crazy stability. And that quick shifter, God, this quick shifter is just, it, it works really well. It is fast, it's responsive, the gearbox has a nice positive feel when you're pressing up and down on shift lever. We are riding on Bridgestone's fantastic Backlax RS11 street tire. This tire is a big improvement versus the RS10. The RS10 was definitely an okay tire, but it lacked a little bit of grip and durability compared to other entries in the sport bike tire class. This RS11 has much more grip, they last longer, and there's all around a better tire and it's neat that it comes as OE fitment on this GSX-R1000 and GSX-R1000-R. Now, it's worth noting that this bike is fitted with a 190-55 size rear tire, so not a 200 that we're starting to see on a lot of super bikes these days. Still a skinnier 190-55 series back tire, but I don't mind. I like the skinnier rear tires because they really just make for a motorcycle that is very nimble. Of course, a big footprint is what you want when you have 160 some horsepower at the business end of the tire, but realistically, that 190 series tire has enough footprint to put the power down. Now, while the handling is awesome with this bike, we didn't really talk about the sound and the character. These GSXR sport bikes always have an awesome induction sound. And this GSXR 1000R continues that trait. Not only is the airbox induction howl very pleasing, but the, the exhaust has a very awesome note to it. It sounds quite different than its predecessor and any other non cross plane I 4 engine. So even though the green bike shares the basic type of engine architecture configuration as the Suzuki, obviously minus the VVT and stuff, it doesn't have that same sound. It has a very unique sound. I love the sound of this motorcycle. Of course, putting a slip-on style muffler would give you even more uncorked sound, but in stock configuration, I like it just because you can be a little bit more sleeper style and still you have that pleasing sound when you're in the cockpit. Maintenance. Maintenance on this GSX-R 1000R. After the initial 600 mile service, 
where you change the engine oil and the filter. This vehicle requires oil changes every 3,500 miles. So every 3,500 miles, you need to drop the engine oil. And every, I think it's 11,000 miles, you need to replace the engine oil filter. So the engine oil filter doesn't have to be replaced when you drop the engine oil per the owner's manual. Realistically, if you're gonna be swapping out the engine oil, you may as well swap out the oil filter. That's how I would do it. But per the manual specification, you do not need to do that. That just goes to show you how good today's lubricants are, and how good the manufacturing process and engineering of these internal combustions are. Valve adjustment intervals on this motorcycle are at 14,500 RPM. So every, I'm sorry, 14,500 miles, you have to adjust the valves, or at least check them. Speaking of 14,500, that is actually the red line of this motorcycle too, so it spins up to that R. God, this thing just handles so good. The suspension, it we talked about it before. It doesn't function quite as well as the front end on the Ninja ZX10R. That thing is just out of this world. But it still functions very well. I don't exactly know what the green team green did to get the handling of that ninja just so exquisite because this motorcycle shares the same front suspension hardware but there definitely is some secret sauce in the way Kawasaki did it. Still, the suspension on this bike is awesome and I do enjoy riding it. Gosh, there's a lot of dirt on this road. We are riding this bike after dark and the LED headlamp does a fine job of illuminating the road ahead. The LED position lights that are a feature on this GSX-R1000 are also look awesome. While I like this LED head beam, I wish this motorcycle had cornering head beams. Because this motorcycle is outfitted with an IMU, I don't know why Suzuki wouldn't fit cornering headlights on this bike. That would make riding in the canyons much more safe and entertaining after dark. I also wish Suzuki would ditch the halogen turn signals and fit some nice LED turn signals. That would really take this bike to the next level. So Suzuki, please, we need cornering headlights and we need LED turn signals. We need it. Well, folks, there it is. Suzuki's 2021 GSX-R 1000 R. I really like this motorcycle. Not only is it comfortable to ride, it handles awesomely. I love the character and the dynamic of this engine. I have a soft spot in my heart for Suzuki GSX-R sport bikes. And for me, for a street bike, for a high performance leader class super bike that you can ride on the street every day, this motorcycle checks a lot of boxes for me. Still, even though it's totally awesome to ride on the street, Realistically, its electronics package is lacking and is well behind the competition at this point. So Suzuki, we need you to step up and we need more advanced electronics package. I'm not an electronics guy by any means. I'm a manual guy. I like axes and shovels and, and heavy objects to do stuff. So I'm not an electronics guy, but realistically, in today's world, you have to have high-end electronics if you want to play the leader and above size superbike game. 
Still, for $17,750, this is a nice motorcycle. Would I plop down that cash for this bike? Well, I might. I really like how comfortable and how versatile this motorcycle is. Yes, the electronics package is lacking compared to its competitors, but I'm not an electronics guy, so I don't really even care. Realistically, the base Suzuki GSX-R1000, that is the real value in the class. For right around 15 grand, you can get a new leader class superbike. Of course, it doesn't have all the bells and whistles as some of the Euro bikes do, but if you're just looking for a bike that does a little bit of everything, gives you the right sensations, these Suzuki GSX-R bikes are awesome. Make sure you guys log on to MotorcyclistOnline.com. That's where all of my content lives. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Thumbs it down if you didn't. And sorry we didn't do a Q&A today, folks. We will reinstate Q&A on the next episode. Thanks for riding along with us today, and we'll see you next time.